All right, so this is going to be, I'm, I'm so pumped to be in this little courtyard with these amazing people here. We're going to talk at length about short form vertical video content. So I got Phil Gertis. Like, look at those shoes, man. Oh, those are suede. Yeah, man. Wowzers. Where'd you get those? Taft online. I don't know. I don't know what that is. <laughs> oh, you can't, we can't don't, hear you. Don't go there. Where? I'm not actually going to say it. No. All right. All right. So I got, <laughs> all right. I'm, I made them. <laughs> Thank you. All right. I got Phil Gertis. I got David Caldwell, Glenda Baker, Ray Ellen, Katie Day, Stephen Kim, Zachary Faust, and Chris Kwan. Just an amazing room of individuals. And I got a few questions I want to roll through to you guys. Because um, I, want, I want us to learn from each other in this setting to really like what's working, what are the trends, how are we building our audiences, how is that turning into business for us and our respective practices with short form video, video content. But let's just go real quick around the room. I want to know how each of you got started. And I might go round robin. I'm going to go Zach first. How'd you get started with video? With video or short form video? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, I got started with video when I walked into the office as a full-time realtor. Didn't do any as a part-time realtor first month and a half. I quit my job at the Department of Corrections because Tony Robbins told me to on a podcast. Um, <laughs> he and, told me to move. Yeah, he told me to burn the fucking boat. And I was like, I'm driving to my boat, so I need to burn it. Um, and so I walked into office full-time and I'm like, now what? Yeah. Um, didn't have any marketing or sales experience and I was broke. So I'm like, okay, no one's making content on social media and social media is free. So this better work. <laughs> okay. And uh, that's really where the work got started. Okay. So early in your career, about what time was that? Did you say? Uh, so I got started in early 2018. All right. So how it started, how's it going? It's going great. Or early 2017, <laughs> early, <laughs> early 2017. I, I misspoke. So coming up on the fifth year, it's going really well. Okay, so like, give us some context for, because um, we're talking like video. Just let everyone like, what's our following like on certain platforms? Sure. What is that like? Uh, Instagram's just under 50, uh, forty-five thousand. Uh, TikTok's uh, a little bit over one point six million, and uh, trying to grow on YouTube now. Uh, we're just under ten thousand subscribers. Love it. Um, so just trying to grow everywhere and keep growing the team. Love it. All right, and we'll get into the business aspects in a little bit. Thanks, Absolutely. Zach. Stephen Kim, how did it start? How's it going? Yeah. <laughs> how many followers? Seven uh, on Twitter, uh, four on YouTube. Not <laughs> 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 Nah. Um, so what the questions go? How did you how oh, did you start with video? Yeah, how's yeah. it going? Just uh, how did I start with video? Um, actually, through Tom Ferry, I remember watching one of his podcasts, and he was like, "If you're a real estate agent, you need to go all in video." And at that time, I was still teaching, so I was like, "Oh, I don't, I don't, want, I don't want my students to see me." So I, I dabbled a little bit. I did two videos a week, and then some of my students started being like, "Oh my God, Mr. Kim, I see you on Instagram." I was like, "Shoot, <laughs> <I'm gonna laughs> slow down here." And then I left, just like you, Tony Robbins podcast, burn the boat. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> so that reference resonated with me. Uh, January 25th, 2019, I went full-time into real estate and I do seven to 10 videos consistently um, a week and I haven't missed a beat. Okay. And so that consistency has, for, for me and my business, uh, essentially has replaced calling people. Yeah. It's, I think, the modern day prospecting. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly, Glenda. And so it's it's revolutionized my business. Okay, I love it. Thanks yeah. for sharing. Thank you for not asking me how many followers and everything. And I appreciate that. How many that. followers yeah. do you have uh, Katie? on Twitter? Seven, <laughs> seven Twitter followers. Same. I have the same. I actually have eight because my mom followed me. What's your um, LinkedIn like? I'm just kidding. LinkedIn's a great platform. It's a great platform, but not what we're talking about today. All right, Katie Day, tell us how to start. How you're, how's it going? Yeah, so as far as video, I got started out doing similar like Tom Ferry podcast and being like, you have to do video, 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 video. So did like Facebook lives um, and cell phone tours of houses and they were freaking terrible I they're still on my YouTube and I watch them sometimes I was doing like videos of rental houses yeah pretty terrible um, so yeah I mean did that and then I think that it was um, basically end of 2019 I was like I can't keep doing this and like seeing all of these epic content creators putting out like sexy listing videos and, and all these things so we hired a videographer in 2020 and like decided to go all in on short form, long form, like anything. Short form probably didn't exist then, but all all things video. Um, and yeah. Cool. Love it. Yeah. Thank you much. Ray. Hello. Um, I guess I, I started video weird. I was with, uh, it was with Snapchat. Nice. Because what, I was. What kind of videos were those? <laughs> <laughs> the original. <laughs> so yeah, the original. <laughs> Uh, so, so, many houses, 
<laughs> well, that sold a lot. <laughs> no. <laughs> so here's what what happened was I was really nervous to be on camera, period. And so the only thing back then that would disappear that you didn't have to worry about was Snapchat. So I started posting like little property tours and stuff like that on Snapchat because I didn't have to worry about it disappearing 24 hours. You know, if I would look stupid, I didn't have sure. to see it. So this is way before the Instagram stories, right? Yeah. So then uh, I was going to do a double open house. I didn't really have any money. I didn't have my own listings. I was going to do an open house on Saturday and open house on Sunday. And both of them sold. And this was like in the market where you get like 90 days on market type stuff, right? Long time ago. Uh, so both of them sold before the open house and neither seller wanted to hold them open. And so the agents called me and said, Hey, that one sold. It's you know under contract. They don't want to, they don't want to do open house. Then like within an hour, I get the other call that the other one is also under contract. They don't want to hold it open. So I was like, well, crap, like that was going to be my lead gen for that week. And I, I was building up for it and I didn't really have anything to do. I didn't have my own listings. I didn't have any money. So I pulled out the old iPhone four and, uh, yeah. Four, yeah. Was that like a 480p? Yeah. Version? Oh, yeah. 480p. Got the old yeah. sidekick. It was amazing. Slid it up. <laughs> I had a sidekick. So, I did. So I was I'm in my I was in my little pickup truck, and I did a um I did a video about not waiting for the open house, and I basically filmed the same thing in front of each house, and then I cut the sentences to where I was jumping back and forth between these two houses that sold, and I had so many people comment to me personally, like not really on the video, but. They told me like, oh, I saw that video you did. I didn't really realize the market that I, coming off of that, I was like, well, I have to do video now because I didn't, I had no idea it would get the amount of play. I was just messing around with my phone. So ever since then, you know, I've been dedicated and devoted to it. So it's, it's awesome, man. It's going okay. It's going okay. Yeah. It's not going well. It's uh, going no, okay. I'm I would kidding. say it's going very well. <laughs> I've got one more follower than Zachary. That's right. One more. It's all, it's all it takes. Oh, my stars and stripes, Miss Glenda Baker. Hey, How's guys. Start? How's it going? My name is Glenda Baker. I'm a real estate agent in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, how it started? It started with uh, a series in my car, originally called Glenda Live, and it was where I would go live on Facebook in my car. And one of the people that was following me said, you should call it Post from the Porsche. And I was like, oh, that's got some legs on it. I like it. Hmm. And so the post from the Porsche was born and it was a Facebook live in my car. Yep. And I was doing it pretty well. And then I saw Zachary's video um, at Elite February 2019 and said, if he can do it, I can do it. And came back to Atlanta and decided to do TikTok videos. And I had been kind of playing around with it. And... That was in February, so it was February 6, 2019, and in October of 2020, I posted my, let's call it my first real TikTok, and I had 122 followers, and today, I just checked, I have 482,000 followers. Amazing. Almost uh, 70 million views, 7 million hearts. Love it. <laughs> so, it's going very well going for me. Really, pretty well, yeah. Yeah, it's going well for me. I post every single day between 6 and 9 a.m. I about to shoot my content. I'm going to get into all that. Yeah. I'm not going into that now. I, I just wanted to, you no, know, you're just setting it the was, scene. I'm I was just that. setting it up for you, she sir. Mr. <laughs> Coach. Sorry, I'm sorry. I, I Let, relinquished the piece of paper to let, you. Let's <laughs> keep in mind. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let first. me pass the mic. <laughs> DC. Hey, David. Yeah. Didn't you go after me last time? I didn't go after you. Yeah. So. I, which I, which I hate, by the way. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm David Caldwell. I would say that I am still getting started yeah. at video. Um, I'm probably the least <laughs> prolific marketer in the room, which I've been excited about this week. Um, I started doing video like years ago, but probably only really like harnessed it in the last couple of years because as I've started coaching, I needed to find a way to leverage my time. And as yeah. mentioned earlier about how it's kind of like this new piece of lead generation. And for me, I knew I needed to speak to more people at once with the little bit of time that I had. So okay. it's been going really well. Like it's really driving, you know, profitability in our business right now. And I, but I do feel like I'm still getting started, so. Love it. PG, DC to PG. DC to PG. Uh, so Phil Gertis, I'm a real estate agent out of Annapolis, Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I actually started in video about 11 years ago. I, in a previous industry, I started a video series called Dominate Your Life because I had a team of around 13,000 people and I couldn't contact them all. So I wanted to train them and I put it on YouTube and it was very, very scary because I wasn't good on video. And I remember I used to tell my wife that she had to take my son, leave the house and I would lock the door <laughs> to the house so she couldn't come back in nobody can know i'm doing this i'm no. gonna publish it i'm publicly. gonna put it on youtube yeah. but no but one can know. can know i'm doing this <laughs> but so to, listen <laughs> to make it better i would go in my office where i had my little terrible camera set up on a tripod and i would actually lock the office door in case she found a way to break into the house oh my gosh so yeah that was me okay. um and then you really thought that one i really through. did i had every plan <laughs> i locked the windows everything um and then they got on the internet yeah and then so uh, fast forward to uh, now I become a real estate agent and I was working on hustle pillars, like open houses, things like that. Uh, I called a lot of expireds and then I went in 2017, I went to a summit and it's the first time I saw Tom and Tom just kept saying video, video, video. So I went home and about a week later I was shooting and throwing video content out. And it was cool because Tom kept saying like, it's not gonna get you what you want right now. It took a, I mean, I remember the time it took three years yeah. where I said, oh my goodness, I don't have time for any of my hustle pillars. My top of mind business has now taken over my entire business. Wow. And, and you called it come list me calls, right? And I trust you calls. There you yeah, go, yeah. right? I took it so, Neo. You said it first. Well, that's that. So, yeah. um, so I trust you calls started coming in and they just haven't stopped. That's amazing. So, Love yeah. it. All right, let's go Chris Kwan. And then we're going to get into some questions. Um, Chris Kwan um, from Orange County, California. Did you think about that? I didn't yeah, think about that. It was kind of slow. Sorry. You think about moving um, to Texas? No. 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 But I knew who to call. <laughs> um, so um, I started in video six, seven years ago, but more of like the family vlogs. Um, yeah. You know, I wanted to get into like families. My daughter, she's like turning six this month and she was born and I was like, oh, the pictures are great, but I really want to capture the moment. And the best way for me to do that was through video. Yeah. So I started creating video, just getting behind the scenes with the video, buying cameras, all sorts of stuff. And I really loved it. And then we had a couple of events that we were talking about with like Summit and Masterminds and all sorts of things. And I was like, this is, this is what I wanna do. And also at the same time, I was having trouble breaking into a farm. For years and years, I was sending, putting money toward it, door knocking, doing everything that I could. And I couldn't break into it for the longest time. And it was like two and a half years and I was ready to give up. And I was like, do I really want to give up two and a half years worth of work? And I was like, okay, if I start doing the video and layer it on with all the other stuff that I'm doing, I could do it. And yeah. in that year, I actually broke into the farm and I've been consistently, consistently in the top two or three in the farm awesome. um, for the last four or five years now. And so nice. I was like, okay, this is my way in, this is my edge and nobody in my market is doing it at any sort of level. So I figured if I just did it, I'd be fine. Right. And now it's just trying to get better at that, better and better and better. So, um, but I'd say it's been tremendous. I mean, my, my growth every single year, as soon as I started coaching, doubled my business every year. It's been after that, it's been better and better and better. And this year has been the best year that I've had by far. So it's amazing. Yeah. All right. So powerhouse group, you guys are all killing it. I want to talk about short form vertical video content in particular. But I think one of the sticking points, we, we already kind of like hearing your origin stories of how you got started in the video. What was the drunk monkey you had to overcome in your head, locking windows and doors and all kinds of crazy things, whatever it take to make the video. But I think a lot of people get bottlenecked on the creative process of, my gosh, it's a time commitment, it's hard. I wanna know, like, just break down super fast answers. What's your creative process from start to finish? And you can get technical with me. You can talk about how you idea generate what you're gonna talk about. You can talk about the shoot day. You can talk about the distribution. I wanna know your creative process, or rather I want everybody to know like what's going on behind the scenes. They're used to seeing the videos drop like bam, bam, bam. What are y'all doing to make those things happen periodically or regularly? Who wants to go first? I know Glenda's ready. Let's get the mic to Glenda. So I batch shoot my content 11 hours a day, um, for one day a month. Okay. And we were talking last night and I've only shot with Denver 14 days. Like, I just think about like crazy. all of the bank of content I've been able to create in 
14 days. So you look at it and you see it on social media and you're like, oh, this is, you know, she posts this every day. How does she do this? How does she ta have time to work? Well, I've only done content creation for 14 days. And just like Steven said, you're pretty good at it. For only yeah. got it two weeks. <laughs> I'm getting better. I'm getting better. So um, this month we shoot December 16th and my goal is to create uh, 50 videos. Right now my highest 42. So I'm, I'm going to shoot 50 videos on December 16th. Yeah, you are. I'm right. all excited about that. I love a goal. But um, like Steven said, we're, I used to call people and do like for sale by owners and expireds and cold calls. Now my hour of power is comments, likes, engagements, and posting. And what I think that a lot of people are missing is the exponential reach oh my gosh, yeah. of the hour now. Yeah. Because used to my hour of power yeah. was how many phone calls? Maybe, maybe, maybe 30. It, on a good day, <laughs> on the best day was 30. Yeah, and not, now, not I mean, and now I will have 30, 30 views on a video within the first one or two minutes. I mean, the video I posted this morning already has 9,000 views. Yeah, you're gonna get, it's, it's, you have 30 views in the first 30 seconds, yeah, pretty so, much. So it's amazing. I think that a lot of agents are um, under underrating the uh, reach and, um, and how relevant the content needs to be. Yeah, to your point, like the conversation starting potential of video. Well, and this is the thing is, what would I have said to those 30 people that I would have called? So you, Glenda, what do you post? I'm just not sure what content. What would you have talked to those 30 people about? What would you have talked to a for sale by owner about? What would you talk to somebody who wants to buy a house? So that's what you're doing in your content totally. creation. And we do it throughout the month. So I see an idea. I see something that's important that looks interesting to me. I consume content that way. I know what to put out and what are my people biting into? That's what, what is relevant to my people. So if I'm, if I'm speaking Japanese to people who only speak English, then they're not going yeah. to bite into it. Yeah. You've got to speak the same language as your audience. Yeah, love that. So 11 hours, go ahead, DC. Yes, you can. Can you put on the microphone? Yeah. Could, could you have gone to those full day, you know, 14 days of shooting without starting with like the stories in the Porsche? Or do you think you had to start with the stories in the Porsche to build the skill set to be able to do the whole day of shooting? Okay, so great question. So Zachary said something this morning that I thought was great. He goes, you've got to get in the gym and start the reps. And so for me, post from the Porsche was literally me getting in the gym and walking on the treadmill. And now I'm literally a marathon runner on that treadmill. And yeah. had I not started with those posts from the Porsche and gotten comfortable, because for me, I grew up as an only child and I would talk to myself in the mirror. And I was so comfortable looking at that phone in my car that it was just like me talking to myself in the mirror because hmm. like I didn't have anybody else to talk to. So for me, it worked out perfectly and I love that. But what's so strange now is I cannot talk to the camera. Everything that I do is unscripted. There is no script. And so, but I can't talk to the camera. If I'm looking at the camera, it doesn't work. So I've got to look off frame and talk to Sam to make it work. I'm Jason. So, yeah. Okay. But, <laughs> but that's the thing is you've got to A-B test what works and Denver said you're great in conversation you're not great at looking at the camera so let's not try and force the square peg into the round hole it's great advice now one no more question charge for you that before tip. you give it the mic what's your see it's unscripted you're shooting for 11 hours the goal is to get 50 videos in that one sit down how are you are you creating a log of ideas or are you just coming in with no ideas cold turkey going to do this thing no 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 I create them all throughout the month I text them over to Denver we keep a running log of what we're going to talk about. So like this morning, um, I, I did a podcast with Zachary and Scott and Tom, and there were a couple of ideas that came up and I was, I'm like grabbing a piece of paper. I'm like taking notes. When I get that thought, I need to put it somewhere because I'm moving so fast that if you don't stop and write it down right that second, then it's gone. You're going to forget it. Yeah. And I want to make sure we talked about credit karma. And I was like, Ooh, 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 I've got a great story about credit karma. Yeah. So I wrote that down. And I think that that's one thing that people, they think that they've got to come up with it when they're sitting down in front of the video, yeah. the, the camera, that's too late. Yep. It's too late because you've got, you got to have a clear mind and you've got to be able to speak in sound bites. I love that short form video. You've got to learn 
to speak in sound bites. That's a great piece of advice. I want to go Stephen Kim real quick. Yeah, no charge for that tip. That's a good sound bite. You're right. Let's go Stephen Kim. So Stephen Kim, you're you're publishing just a ton of content, a ton of video. And I know that you're batching it out and you're pretty ahead of schedule most of the time. Yep. Talk to us about your creative process. Uh, creative process. So I'm about 60, I'm 60 days, at least 60 days ahead of schedule all the time. So I, I go on holidays or something happens, whatever the case may be, like it's consistently going out uh, right now. Oh, so actually I don't use Trello anymore just because we have such a great system with uh, Google, Google okay. Drive, G Drive. But I used to get everything put into uh, Trello boards. And for those who aren't familiar like with topics that, and stuff, I'm topics, talk about Monday, this. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, Friday, I'd, I'd upload everything. I would pin my videographer or my editor at that time. Uh, and then he would get everything ready to go. Uh, so everything, how often were you filming? Uh, I was filming every Monday from nine 30 till about one, two o'clock. Uh, now I can do twice a month and get, get the same a, amount of content, get a month's worth of content. It's the reps. It's the reps. And, and the big thing is, is like for people who, who struggle with video, I, I found having a consistent theme really beneficial it helped me to not think too much about okay well you know three thursdays down the road what am i going to post well that's a think about a thursday i know i'm going to hit you with a quote uh so just having that planned out was really really uh really beneficial for me i love staying that ahead of, staying, ahead of, staying right. ahead of schedule so i want to get a different <laughs> so I wanna, thirsty <laughs> i want to switch to zach's perspective because zach i'm going to make a bold statement that may be untrue okay you're not batching out content like False. they're batching out content. Oh, not like they're batching. No, but I what is batch. for whatever reason when I look at your stuff on TikTok or Instagram, it feels on a lot of levels far more like just thought of this, just thought of this. So, Talks about your process. Sure. So short form when I talk batching, um, actually the mastermind we had in October is a perfect example of this. Is I'll take time throughout the day if I'm on Instagram and I'm scouting out talent basically i'm scouting out sounds i'm scouting out motivation and i have time throughout the day one of the biggest processes i have is i have scheduled creative time it's good. i have scheduled time where it's time to come up with ideas it's time to mastermind it's time to write you know creative people are creative because they take time to be creative so that's totally that's the one thing and when i have 20 or 30 sounds and then i'm stuck in a hotel for two and a half hours and i already have it scheduled in shoot content I go through and I'll shoot 20 or 30 of them and I'll release them over the course of 45 days. So you are bad. You are getting these things up Big front. Okay. A, lot of the, a lot of the videos I'm putting out were shot a month ago. So that's interesting. So we've gone around for a few of you and it seems like a common theme is, A, there was a starting point where you started getting the reps in. You started learning the craft. You started becoming effective on camera. And then you reached a point where you looked for efficiencies and for an exponential output of more content. And you started batching content by blocking your schedules. But I think, Zachary, what you're saying, man, like it's, it's Seth Godin 101, the practice. The practice. If you want to be great at something, do it every day. It's, it's a, the, we mentioned the sports a lot in, in the podcast with Tom, um, with Scott, yeah. but same in the fitness world. It's I, very, I don't talk about sports here. It, I'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, right. You're right. We'll talk about hair gel. So in different hair gel brands. So exactly. <laughs> um, in the gym, it's very you. it's very simple to get in shape. <laughs> it's very simple to get in shape. Caloric, uh, calorie deficit, and then workout. You yeah. can go on walking, go on jogging. There's a million different ways, but there's only like, I don't know, one percent, two percent that actually do it, and then the other ninety percent will keep looking for the secret, this hack, this quick shortcut. I think video is the same. Yep. Take time to be creative, shoot content, keep doing those every single day, and you'll get really good. The same way, if you eat well and work out, you'll start to get into better shape. I love but that. But people want to have abs the next day. I love that. Let's go, Ray. I want to go, Ray, real quick. And Ray, I want to change the question unless you're dying to say something on this one. No, no. I mean, no, it's fine. <laughs> good, because I'm going to change I, the question. Okay. I want to know, like, what are you seeing right now that's working for growth? I'm looking at your Instagram and it's growing pretty rapidly. What's behind yeah. that? Like, I want to talk about how are you growing your followings on your respective platforms? So consistency for sure. I actually, so funny story about Instagram. I hired a lifestyle photographer, uh, being the big burly man that I am. You, you seem like, you're very <laughs> photogenic. Yeah, I mean, I'm just not like your typical lifestyle photographer candidate, but I hired a lifestyle photographer to prove that they don't work. And so I, I booked it for uh, 30, uh, I did 30 shots yep, yep. and I posted those once a day and boy, was I wrong. So one of the things I learned is that on Instagram specifically, people wanted a, a type of quality. They were looking for a higher quality than other places that I would post. So um, I booked another 
uh, session for 30 days. And so I did like 60 days. I think this was last year. Yeah, this was about this time last year, October, November. And I just posted once a day for like 60 days, these lifestyle photos. And I would, sometimes it would have a short story. Sometimes I'd talk about, you know, something funny or what I was wearing or whatever. And a lot of people just latched on and started following and started asking questions. And now, you know, I get three or four leads a week from Instagram. Um, it's, I'm doing a lot more with short form uh, in part because of Glenda and Zachary and, you know, what yeah. we're learning. But um, I'm, I'm just encouraging my agents to be consistent with it. And, well, I guess this kind of goes back to the previous question, too. My creative process is a little weird. I actually had Tim get my bag. So this is my creative process. So I have contracts that are misprints, and I cut them up. This looks, my broker used to do that. So, so oh. what, it, what this is, is I'll take a day and say, okay, the first question that I get asked from a client is going to be what I'm going to talk about. Yeah. So this one in particular was the week of close. So we were talking about the week of close, and while we were on the phone, they said um, <clears throat> they're wondering why their closing was delayed. Uh, they wanted me to double check with some contractors. They were asking about the reinspection with a professional, right? So, and I, there were like four or five of them that they thought of, right? That my client was asking me, and as they were asking me, I'm writing these down. Well, then I got off the phone and I was like, well, what else could go this direction? And I just started, this is all about the closing week of close. What happens when you close? Will the buyers be at closing? Will the seller be at closing? Who can be there? What do I need to bring? When can I move in? Like all these questions that are pretty common. You know, taking pictures of my mess. All the <laughs> so, I, well, so this is pretty remarkable. So I think you need to pose for a lifestyle shot real quick, yeah. right? There Here's my go. little sheets Good. of paper. Perfect. So, so what I have now, and what I what I encourage my agents to do is have a little content jar on their desk, and the goal would be to take all of these little pieces of paper and you put them in a jar, and when you're in a drought because you don't know what to post or don't know what to do, you pull draw one out of the one. jar, and and. The, whenever you pull one out, you can either just do a video, you could do a reel, you could do a photo, but whatever piece of content you do, you don't throw it away, you put it back in the jar. Or in my case, I'm just traveling with these. So you, you, put it, <laughs> you put it back in the jar, and the next time you pull it out, you have to do a different type of content. So yeah. if, if one time you did a video, then the next time you do a photo. Love so, that. But the consistency that this has allowed a lot of our agents has really been a big benefit. That's awesome. Katie Dago. I know Glenda Baker's thinking of this, but I think that Glenda needs to do an ask me anything and print them off and pull them out of a jar and yeah. do question and answer yeah. of what? random questions. I think Katie Day needs to do that. And don't throw out any of the questions. Yeah. <laughs> like I I don't know if we just had that same moment, Glenda, but both of us were like, aha, light bulb. Holy shit. Like, like I literally cannot get back to it fast enough. Your, hand, your, your notes were freaking I mean what I can do with this one oh, idea. Like, yeah. there you go. holy shit. Well, good. Actually, Denver, she's shooting two days yeah. next week. <laughs> Actually, I can't believe you just said that because I'm shooting the 16th and the 20th. So, no lie. So, Hold that mic. So, so great. I, I love you so much. I, do you know, I wake up with you and I go to bed with you and I love it. Oh my gosh. Anyway, so. Cut that. Inside jokes that nobody has any idea yeah, yeah. what's going on. So, so no lie. So, Think about this idea. It's a clubhouse reference. So we, and I'm going to do this. So don't do it. I don't want anybody to do it. So this group right here, I'm going to get us all a jar and I'm going to get us all colored sheets of paper. I'm going to start with 10 questions that I have for each of you. I'm going to send it. I'm going to send it to you. That's a good idea. And then I want us all to do it on video and say, okay. Um, and I'm going to come up with a great alliteration that's an ask me anything. What about a rhyme? Would you accept a rhyme? No, but I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do an ask me, I'm gonna do an ask me anything. I'm gonna do an alliteration and I'm gonna, and we're all gonna do it on the same day. I don't know what What about day. a pun? Ask an agent. <laughs> just messing with you, Glenda. I love this idea. No, but, I, but I'm serious, I'm serious because like, and we'll all do it like on Wednesday. America's agents. No. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a hard no. But no, I, and we all do it Great. on the same day. And what we do is we all post it on Instagram as an Instagram reel. And we all do it and tag each other. This group only. 
and we all have our jar. I'm going to, as soon as I get back to Atlanta, I'm going to send you all a jar. I'm going to send you 10 questions specifically for each of you. What I know about you, what I want to know about you. And we're, and then you fill it up with whatever you're asking me, anything questions are that you get from Instagram. And we're going to do a show like that. And then you can like nominate be, somebody else. Kind of like one of those nomination challenges where they do it. When does that show you now again? Uh -huh. But then we can do like an alliteration name. The name could have alliteration, right? What's your next question, Jason? Yeah. Yeah, skip. Wait, so wait. One, one thing. There is a... Let me get the mic real quick for you. Or here. Yeah. I love it, Glinda. I want my jar. So there is a comedian. Uh, I can't think Dave of his Chappelle. name. Dave Chappelle, who does this. He has punchlines. He puts it in a jar. Every time he has a punchline, he just puts it in the jar. He walks by it. He'll put something out. He'll take it out. And he'll go, how can I make this punchline work? Stay and then he just, yeah. how do I make this just, funny? How do I make this funny? And he creates he a whole it. skit behind that. He actually made a whole joke behind it. It was actually really hilarious. No, but in all seriousness, but, the I, well, go ahead. But Finish it's the up. same thing, right? It's like you have your process of writing down pieces of paper and notes. For me, I have notes on my actual phone where I have an idea. And once I have that creative time to go through it, I go, this is what I'm thinking about. This is the thoughts that I have. These are the ideas that I'm coming back. And then when I go back to it later, I know exactly what I'm thinking about at that time. And then I can also expand on that. So like everybody has something like that. I think everybody, it's important for everybody to have some type of a creative process or a time to be able to dissect that, that idea, make it into a video of some sort and storytell it in a way that's personal to them. And going back to Glenda's idea, like candidly, there's a, there's a deeper benefit to what she's prescribing, which is a shared accountability a masterminding, whereby like with the jar, you are actually asking somebody questions. Like if Glenda Baker asks me a question and I answer it, I'm being asked by Glenda Baker. And so there's a shared following base. Like that's cross, what is it, cross branding basically, but it's brilliant. Yeah, but I mean, the thing about it is, is that if we, if we each take that one series and I'll come up with a great oh, series a that'll work for all of us, name. And then <laughs> if we take that, we have one show a week that we can literally take and go on our Instagram, ask me anything. This is the day I'm going to do ask me anything with my group of social media superheroes. Oh, that's cool. oh. Damn. Oh, oh. <laughs> Some days I'm so awesome. I kill myself. Okay. So that, that's I love it. I, I love actually, it. that's not a glendism. Keep going. I, I, I maybe, love it. Maybe. I love it. So like, like on Wednesdays, I do social media superheroes with my, with my friends, social media superheroes with my friends. Oh my God. Okay. I'm going to get something friends. a little bit better it. and a little bit more write refined. Down, down. Don't forget it. Oh, Can trust I mean, me. I won't. But this is the thing is like, sure, that gives us you. each That'd be green lantern. something and, and yes. like your followers may not be my followers. My followers may not be your followers, but now they know that we're friends. So do yes. you think that they're, the credibility that you're, that I'm giving you, my it's, people are gonna love that's you. The, that's the, the credibility right that you're giving me, your people are gonna love me. And think about how we can build on that as a team, social media superheroes. <gasps> Okay. Is that the new group? I think that's, the, that's the new group. I, I, that's, that's what the master. Uh, that's what the master. Uh, yeah. I want t-shirts. Super I want social heroes. That's what t-shirts. Are you gonna have names on the back? <laughs> oh. oh. Okay, I'm thirteen. I'm number thirteen. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> all, right, all right, all right, all right. I got another question. I want to pivot a little bit. So, so a couple things I'm picking up on this. One, I, Glenda, I love the idea. Ray, I love the inspiration of the idea and the process. Something that's really, really obvious is every one of you who is making video consistently has consistently put time in their schedule to think through what do I want to talk about? Yeah. I mean, imagine making phone calls where you have no idea what I'm going to say when they pick up the phone. You have to give thought to, I'm going to communicate an idea. What is the idea? It could be a little bit of thought. It could be a lot of thought. So certainly investing the time on a recurrent basis to be planning out your, your videos. I'm also pretty impressed by this conversation about how non-technical it is. Yeah. We really haven't talked much about like, oh, I, I look at the keywords and I do some Google Trends research and I make sure the hashtags are this or that. Like nobody's talking about that. You just make fun of yourself. I just made fun of myself. <laughs> is that the Jason Fantana voice? I, I, I'm okay with myself the way that I am. I can make fun of myself. But, but reality is like, what's more important than all the technical side of this stuff is the, the actual social side of it. What is the message? What am I saying? Video is just a communication channel. And I, I think that's killer. What were you going to add? I, I think like you nailed it because someone I think like so me too. who's insane. Well, not, 
<laughs> you didn't nail your point. You you nailed when you I set you made up fun perfectly. Of oh, thank you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> no, like somebody like me that's so systematic, like being here and hearing how it's really not that technical. It is a just do it mindset, like prepare and then press go. Uh, that's what I do. So yeah. it's like confirmation to tell me it really is prepare and then press go. I'm not doing something wrong because I don't know all the hyper technical aspects of how to do this, you know? I, yeah. I would, Let's go Katie real quick would, and we'll go Zach. I would almost say would it's go and then prepare. Like you've got to get started. Well, yeah, I, that's what I was going to say. I was going to say shoot then aim. Yeah. Like, Shoot yeah. your no, no, shot. no, no, no. I like go and then prepare. Go and then prepare is fine, but I'm I gonna like, say it my I way like, while I, I talk like to Glenda. I say in. shoot and then aim. Leap before you review look. your analytics. See if they like your hair the certain way, but you're not gonna know that unless you shoot first. Yeah. Right, like, and it's yeah. not flat. They hate. That's definitely not flat. No, it's straight. It's super straight, and right now it's very beautiful, wavy, curly. It's probably big because we're it's humidity. Are you talking and about you're me? In Texas. Yeah. <laughs> talking about you. Yeah. It's the beard. The beard's getting the beard. a little curly. It is because of the humidity. The worst. The worst time to think about what you're gonna say is when you're supposed to say it. Yeah. All right, yeah. I've I've so. definitely stolen a lot of y'all's time, so I have one more question that I want to just kind of get some perspective from anybody. What are the trends you're looking at in 2022? What are the trends you're looking at? What are y'all paying attention to? This could be a technical answer or a creative answer. I'm gonna say my, can I say my answer and then hand I was gonna go to you last. Any, I'm not give any, like, I'm not even gonna talk about it. I'm very interested in NFTs, extremely. What makes you interested in NFTs? NFTs? I'm, extre I'm extremely interested in NFTs because of the blockchain technology and what it's doing for a ton of under, other industries. And it will be the backbone of Web3. We're in Web 2, just like social media and uh, e-commerce is the backbone of Web 2. Crypto so what, so a lot of people be, are using it, but what, what makes you attracted to it? Again, like I said, I don't want to allow, because I don't even have the right answer. All I know is NFTs will sneak their way and blockchain will sneak their way into being a valuable source for us because it's going to be how the world operates. Yeah. And I just think it's something I'm interested in looking at. I think in 2022, it's going to get farther than just art and music. It and already gonna, is. Yeah, and it's gonna grow into the point like we're going to the Mavericks game tonight where you're getting a ticket that's an NFT and you get to, you get a little wheel spin. It's just a new, if you're, uh, if it's a new exclusive pass. Yeah, and if you hits the blue level, you get an additional beer at the game. Like, like stuff like that is going to be part of our daily culture and I wanna see how we as the first movers in so many things adapt while everyone else is complaining. Yeah, and I, I think I think I would add to that. Like, and by no means do I think of myself as some kind of an expert on NFTs. You know a lot more than I do. But the way that I see them being utilized now is not that different from what we used to call other things, like an exclusive offer or something like that, or a special experience. But it's just being packaged differently. So I think if you can not be intimidated by the new language and you can leverage it, there's still an opportunity to get on the early level as people figure out how, how it really functions, what it really does. All right, what else? Trends. Oh. No, go ahead. Trends. Trends, I think agent personalities. Like, Glenda, you're crushing it because you have such a magnanimous personality. Magnanimous. Sorry, what? Magnanimous. Well, 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 sorry. Magnanimous, Mr. Keith. The spelling, oh. M-H. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> magnanimous in a sentence. Magnanimous. Glenda is okay. Uh But I think in 2022, these agent personalities, because we do video. We do it on a consistent basis, and we love doing it. But it, now it's just like your, our audiences crave who we are. Like, they want to know the real Glenda. And I find in 2022, you're going to see agents who have just a fun, like wicked personality really rise quickly through the ranks just by showcasing their personalities. Not even production quality, you know, you know, a buyer tip, a home seller tip. It's just the personality. Those Some, are, someone said yesterday. Bring it to Phil real quick. Sorry. Someone said something yesterday about how, I think it was Tim, about how it used to be just like you got to get on and you got to do it. And now... Like, and as you guys know, especially if you talk with me here, it's for me, it's all about authenticity. So when you talk about that, like what is your brand, but not to your brand that you want to just show the world, what is your brand that the world sees every day that you're not showing the world? So that's, that's really what I will be focusing on in 2022. Love that. Let's, let's go DC real quick. What are you looking at? <laughs> no, I would just, I would just say the same thing, like just behind the scenes, right? Like who people really are versus like i'm like a big market update guy right because i'm a, the like, bestest I'm, I'm into market updates magnanimous but, you know what's word? funny like what what i get the most what i get the most comments on every day like every morning i post like a resting bitch face morning gym <laughs> photo and i say like back squats and sad songs 
<laughs> and if I don't post what song I was listening to, people will be like, well, what were you listening to? Or like, do you really like, what were you like listening to? to like sad country music? I'm like, yes, I do. I do too. Oh, you don't I listen get, to hype music either? No, I don't listen to hype music. I, like, I love the Carpenters. I was to but, 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 but like that, like, <laughs> that behind the scenes. Like I like instruments. Sorry. No, no, I'm with you. I like, really like, do. like, but that, like, I have a country, I'll share, I'll share I love lamps. Play, yeah, play yeah, with you. It's country music and lifting. But, um, the you want to get pumped up, listen to some sad country songs. Yeah, right, 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 right. yeah it's right. behind the scenes. Let me be my. I got to do my job. Okay, so let's do like one or two more answers, and then we wrap up. Trends that you're looking at. Who's got a big trend? They're they're predicting something that they're going to see next year that people should be looking at. Chris, I don't know if I have the exact. I don't have an exact trend, but I think is it I think sad it's country songs. No, no sad country okay. songs or orchestral stuff. Um, not that that's not relevant. But uh, I think our, our everything is moving so fast in so many different directions that I think it's important for when people see something new to not be afraid to to go in in it, even if nobody else is doing. It. Like I'm the type of person like I gotta test it out for a little bit. I gotta see what happens. I think this year, like for me, it's like it's good advice. I gotta see something. If I know that I can see the potential of something, yeah. just go all in on it yeah. and don't be fearless. Like you just gotta go, and that's. Yeah, yeah. I think that's yeah. super good advice. All right, going once, going twice. Any other trends that you guys are seeing? Okay, Glenda goes, and then I got one. So scripted reality is done. It's it's been overplayed. So I think that you said something that was really interesting. We're all we all have the same knowledge. I mean, we all know how to help people buy and sell houses, right? So when you talk about the personality. What's the difference? What's the X factor? So you need to be able to identify what is your X factor and double down on that because people are falling in love with imperfection. They're falling in love with authenticity. Scripted reality and post to be perfect is too cliche, overdone and outdated. In 2022, you're going to see now more than ever yeah. people posting their vulnerabilities and their real self. And people are going to be chasing and embracing that part and that character. They come for the plot. They stay for the character. And if you cannot find your X factor, you are going to be left behind very quickly. Cool. That's, that's, video. that's good. Yeah. <laughs> I want to piggyback on top of that one last thing. Not that there's much left to be said, okay. but as far as it, no, I, I, I completely agree with you. Totally okay. agree with you. Of course you. you do. Of course I do. <laughs> you know, These are the droids you're looking <laughs> for. I want to say some mind games. Of I, I will do whatever you say. Ms. NLP. Lena. NLP. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, I, I think that the days of thinking you can farm out your social media, like when I look at this room here of individuals, every single one of you is passionate about your subject matter. You care about it, you care about your audience, you care about your people, you care about your followers, they're real people to you. And there are a lot of agents and professionals who are inundated with work and they look at social media as this burden of responsibility, like, oh, I gotta leverage this amazing platform that lets me talk to people. And I think that in 2022, if you haven't yet, it's the day where you realize, if I wanna get a beautiful garden, I gotta put the gloves on and get my hands dirty. Because the only way you get that garden is by doing the work, it's like anything else. There's no free lunch, nobody's gonna ever crush it on social anywhere unless they get personally involved. It doesn't mean you don't have your Denver videographer right. or video editors or people around you supporting you, but it does mean that at the center of the subject matter, it's you, it's you, it's you. And I also think a lot of agents, they don't wanna put themselves on video. I, look, this is like social media is about people. When I follow somebody on social, I'm following a person, not the houses they sell, I'm following a person. So I wanna hear your voice. I wanna hear your perspective. I want you to advise me. Do it vulnerably, do it passionately, but it's about the individual having influence over people in 2022. So, well, and and think about it. You you said the garden. You talked about the garden. Well, I can hire the landscaper to do the yard, to plant the garden, but that garden is a reflection of him. I've told him what to plant, but it's a reflection of him. You closed the loop on my metaphor. That's good. That's it, really it's, good. It's the truth because it's the detail. Absolutely. Of it. And it's the sound of your voice on social is what makes you the character. That's the what makes you the star of your show. And if you think that fame and influence within your industry yeah. isn't setting you apart, you're not living in 2022. Yeah. 
boom. You guys are rock stars. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, guys, what an awesome conversation. I'm grateful for each and every one of you. And I expect my jar for the superhero social Agents whatever in the mail. Agents of America. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys are awesome.